before the German U-boats off the waters of Hatteras that it earned the name Torpedo Junction. In these early months of 1942, when the war came to the East Coast, the military proved completely unprepared to defend coastal shipping. The Navy possessed a mere 20 ships to patrol 1,500 miles of coastline from Maine to the Gulf of Mexico. In March 1942, after two months of unabated U-boat attacks, the military turned to a relatively new, untried resource, the Civil Air Patrol. Established on December 1, 1941, the Civil Air Patrol was a volunteer organization mobilizing the nation's civilian pilots and aviation enthusiasts into a corps of flying Minutemen for auxiliary service to the armed and civil defense forces of the United States. By March, senior leaders in the military agreed to use the CAP in an anti-submarine patrol role for a 90-day trial period. From the onset of the first Coastal Patrol missions, the CAP crews proved invaluable to the American <coughs> defense effort. From dawn to dusk, pilots and observers flying unarmed light aircraft patrolled long stretches of open ocean, often mere hundreds of feet above the rolling waves. These early efforts served as an active deterrent for brazen daylight U-boat operations, forcing submarines to dive and evade potential attack. CAP patrols located shipwrecked sailors, marked wreckage or sea mines, and escorted the merchant vessels carrying the fuel, arms, equipment, and men needed overseas for the Allied war effort. Furthermore, the use of the CAP aircraft allowed the military to husband its limited forces in a focused effort to find, fix, and destroy reported submarines and end their reign of terror. Convinced of its value, the military removed CAP's trial status, and by the end of 1942, 21 Coastal Patrol bases extended from Maine to the Gulf of Mexico. From July to September 1942, North Carolina established two Coastal Patrol bases, Base 16 here in Manio and Base 21 at Beaufort. On this very day, 70 years ago, the National CAP Headquarters officially activated Coastal Patrol Base No. 16, Manteo, North Carolina. The following day, on July 22nd, a group of men and women arrived at Skyco Field, several miles south of here, to clear away brush, mow the field, erect a radio tower, and, b and battle untold waves of enemy mosquitoes. <laughs> Five days later, the first aircraft landed at the field, flown by such men as William P. Bridges of Shelby, Dabney M. Coddington of Charlotte, Claude Jarrett of Asheville, and Vernon C. Rudolph of Winston-Salem, who left his promising business, Krispy Kreme Donuts, on hold while he flew for the CAP. On August 10th, the first coastal patrols lifted off from Skyco Field, covering an area extending from Norfolk to Ocracoke Inlet. Base aircraft kept the U-boat threat at bay. Before the Manio base began operating, U-boats sank 74 vessels off the coast. While the Manio and Beaufort bases patrolled the Tar Heel coastline, only two ships, both night attacks, when CAP was not flying, were lost to enemy submarines. Beginning in October and concluding in January 1943, Base 16 moved from Skyco Field to Naval Auxiliary Air Station Manio, where we gather here today. And service to the nation in the CAP did not did include the ultimate sacrifice for the men and women of Base 16. On the afternoon of December 21st, 1942, Lieutenants Julian L. Cooper of Concord and Frank M. Cook of Asheville sustained engine failure shortly after takeoff. The men landed in the frigid, churning surf two miles off New Inlet, north of Rodanthe. While the men floated in the water, neither the orbiting CAP planes overhead nor the Coast Guardsmen in surf boats could reach them before dark. At daybreak the following day, no trace of them could be found. In March, the Coast Guard recovered Cook's remains off of Cape Lookout. To this day, we remember Julian Cooper, who remains on eternal coastal patrol. In the late afternoon hours of August 31st, 1943, the flag at Base 16 was lowered for the last time, and you can actually see it folded over there in the Base Museum. Days later, the Dare County Times published an editorial expressing the community's views in regards to the base. They wrote, quote, Seldom, if ever, has a group of people lived in this community for a year or such a matter and departed with the respect and affection so widely manifested as had fallen to the lot of the Coastal Air Patrol.